Codefrau.net uh, here the email address. Um, and Codefrau has two parts. It's about code and Frau. Frau is uh, German for woman. Um, so this is my handle. I'm very glad how to see this many women here. Um, it's also, this is my first in-person international conference that I went to since coming out. And I felt very safe because LGBTQ people here are welcome in Argentina. So. Thank you. Um, and so, code, why did I choose code? Well, I, I write code. Uh, that's what I do for a living. I've been doing it for quite a while. Um, specifically, uh, uh, lately, I write VM code. Um, and then everyone is, oh, oh VMs, yeah. Like, um, we have a few here, uh, VM coders, but um, most people just like to use VMs instead of actually hacking on them. Um, and, but when I say I write VM code in JavaScript, people are, what? Um, but it's actually quite a lot of fun. And um, Gila did a great job of introducing a talk I was not going to give. Um, but I should at least mention that a little bit. So um, here's one of the VMs I've been working on. Um, so this is, uh, this is Croquet. Um, the company that I work for. This is the talk I'm not going to give, so I, I will just mention a little bit what we do. Um, this is a virtual machine that's running inside of the web browser, is running JavaScript code, but it's synchronized. So what you can do is join this little game here, like it's a little game, uh, you might know this game, um, by just scanning the QR code with your phone. So if you grab out your phone, you can scan a QR code and it will teach Gila this little thing. Like if you click here and say create QR code, that's how you create a QR code in Chrome if the application doesn't have it. Um, we happen to have a QR code by our, by our own here. And um, let's see. OK, there's someone else. I see a second uh, little thing there. Oh, three people, three people. And OK, you can tap to to shoot, and when you tap, then you go, and okay, we can, I can play against you, I guess. Oh, let's leave this up here. Um, so I can move, I can shoot. Where am I? Oh, which one is mine? <laughs> I think I just died. Okay, the, so the filled one is mine here, so I'm at, at the top at the moment. I have one, I have two points. Anyways, um, so this is a little game, and uh, the cool thing is that to program this game, um, you only write a web page. This is the complete source code of the game. It's called index.html. Um, you have a little bit of, I can make this larger. Um, we have a little bit of uh, CSS on the top. Then we have the actual HTML, which really just has three elements, which is a canvas and then the joystick ID. And um, then we have a link to the actual source code. Um, and then there is something called game, which keeps track of the ships, which is just a JavaScript map. Um, the asteroids and the blasts are set. And then we have some subscribe and um, yeah, subscriptions here. And um, also you can see there's, there's a main loop like you would have in any game, um, which goes through all the ships and moves each ship. Then it goes through all the asteroids, moves each asteroid. Very plain, simple JavaScript code. Then we have uh, classes for the ships themselves, which react to the left, the right, and forward thrusters and firing the blaster. Um, a little bit further down, the asteroids, they move by themselves. Um, and they might be hit by a blast. And then the blast itself, which is the little um, points uh, that, that move around. Um, but it's, uh, this looks like very regular game code. There's nothing multiplayer in here that you even noticed, I guess. And um, then we have the, uh, what we call the view. 
And there is, okay, if I press the A button or the, the left arrow, um, then I publish the left thruster view. And um, the, that event, um, then we have an update thing here where we actually draw stuff on the screen. Um, uh, we draw various ships, the asteroids, it's all very simple uh, drawing code. Then we join a session and that's it. The thing that is not in here is networking code, server code, none of that. What's actually happening is when someone else joins this session, we, I take a snapshot of the whole state of the JavaScript uh, heap, not the whole heap, but uh, what we call the model part, um, serialize it, that gets transferred to the party joining, and then it just resumes from there. That's an idea I got from Smalltalk. So there are a lot of small talk ideas in the system that we, that we build here. Um, this is the very lowest level of the library where you just have a publish subscribe um, model. And all those little virtual machines on my Mac, on your phone, they run in sync. The code executes locally on your phone or on my machine. It does not execute on our server. Our server just relays the inputs. Like when I press a button here, that input goes back to each of you and the little virtual machine is completely deterministic. And if you start at the same state and you process the same events, you will end up at, this, at the same state. There are some edge cases where we actually have to make, that, uh, make sure that that's true, but that's, that's kind of what we do. Um, so unfortunately, I don't have too much time to, to talk about uh, this much more, um, but um, we actually take this to, to like a really uh, high level of um, building metaverse worlds, um, for example here, so there's a campus world, um, that uses the exact same server infrastructure um, because our server really doesn't know what kind of application is going on there, uh, is running there. And um, you can join this one too if you want. Um, and I will just jump over here to, to show something interesting. Like, okay, there's, there's, a, there's a physics simulation here in this corner um, where things are, are running uh, in the same. Okay, see, okay, three users uh, are over there. Um, and back in this corner here, there is a little live programming uh, thing which is built on top of the of the basic croquet layer um, so the just the croquet thing does not have a live programming uh, programming built in but this microverse ha Yoshiki Yoshima uh, implemented it. it's kind of a traits uh, thing um, where you can plug behaviors into into objects um, and so we have this little world here that I can drag and then there's this little car uh, that's going down here and when I drag the world um, what's happening is that it's uh, publishing a new angle um, event and now if I look at the toy car here I'm rushing through it beca uh, because of the time but I can um, say okay we, we will subscribe to the new angle event in in the car, and what the new angle does, it's uh, adding that angle to the to the car's angle. And what we get by that is one of uh, Alan's favorite demos, which is, oops, I can control the car just by turning. Oh, I, I actually have to accept this. Okay, oops, no, cancel. Click, click, save. Where's the car? And okay, demo effect, nothing, nothing works. Why isn't this working? You forgot to uncomment the, the new angle meter, no? Oh yeah, yeah, this, uh, it's uncommented. Yep, you're right. Well, that shows you it's not fake. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> let's see, where's the car? Let it come here and now I can control the car. <laughs> so that's a drive a car demo like you've seen Ellen do a uh, hundred times in, in eToys. Um, so it is a live programming system. You can, can do all kinds of things. Um, and it's called Croquet because uh, all our code names are inspired by Alice in Wonderland. Hi, hey, Alice. Um, okay, so that is one kind of VMs I 
I built, and you're you're welcome to uh, check that stuff out. If you're uh, if you go to our California Small Talkers meetup group, um, we we do that once a month. Uh, Yoshiki gave a really good uh, talk about the microverse and its its inspirations by small talk. So check this out there. There's a YouTube link here in in here if you if you scan that. Um, other virtual machines I'm, I have been working on is uh, actually something you, you saw today. Um, Dan was using that for, for, for his talks. Um, I can enter full screen here. So this is something, um, so the, these virtual machines that, that, that he's using nowadays for, for his talks are all written in JavaScript, um, which is wonderful because pretty much every computing device nowadays that has a screen can also run JavaScript. So that, that's the reason why, why we use that JavaScript. And even if some people don't really like JavaScript, it can still be a compilation target, right? Um, but you can also uh, do real small talk here. And um, let me show you one thing. Um, oh, no. We're going to uh, run. So uh, the, the classical thing, 3 plus 4, um, is... is uh, it, the reason this is interesting is it because it exercises a whole lot of the small talk machinery, uh, even though it seems like it's so, it's so simple because it needs to invoke the printer and the evaluator and the compiler and all of this, right? So that's the reason why we use three plus four. Um, so if I do this at seven, what's, what's maybe more interesting is that this outside system here that Dan didn't even mention today is called the lively kernel, which is a small talk inspired system in JavaScript, in the web browser, and I used it to build this virtual machine here where I can just click uh, this running and, and I actually have a view into my uh, virtual machine and I can enable break on do it, um, which will show you, okay, I'm printing this. And this is actually what the compiler did. This is the byte code um, for this, which means um, I can push a constant of four onto this stack, let me find the step button, it's down here. Okay, so this just changed, uh, this, this line here you see, the stack pointer is pointing at the four now. Um, one more step, it's pushing the constant three, and one more step, uh, it, will do, it will do a send of plus, but because that's a primitive, we don't actually enter into that method, but it will just take the three and the four off the stack and push the seven onto the stack, so if I do this, there's our seven. Um, and then we will return from this uh, unnamed method here, which is to do it, because it's just a temporary method that was uh, created, and we will end up here in this um, method. So if I do another step, then yeah, we're in this method that has a lot more temporary variables and arguments and all of this. So this is a, uh, a wonderful little system where you can actually inspect the stuff that's going on here. like. On the top left here, we have the, the receiver, which in this case is a, is a generator, and I can drill down into the various uh, environments, uh, the various objects that are in there. Um, and um, yeah, so this is a wonderful to, way to play around with this system. I do have a different version of this um, virtual machine. So this is the one that's running in um, inside of Lively. There's also uh, another one, and you can get to that uh, via the Smalltalk Zoo website. So if you just uh, Google Smalltalk Zoo, um, that's uh, Dan's website with all the uh, cool machines. But if you just Google Smalltalk 78, then you will actually end up here on my, um, on my GitHub page. And this has a little link to the index HTML. And um, this is the you saw this, this loaded much faster than, than the lively version, which is a real full environment that, that takes a while to load. Uh, this is actually one of the images uh, Alan was using for his uh, talks. Um, and we are at the moment working on um, making something using this virtual machine for next year's 50th anniversary, which is the Alto um, 50, uh, the Alto machine's 50th anniversary, so hopefully we will have something in uh, there. Um, and okay, one, one little thing that 
Dan likes to demo, I, you, that Alan likes to demo, is making uh, a connection between objects because he hates apps. Apps are separated, right? There are silos and you cannot really get the data out of one uh, to the other. So there is this uh, animation window here, which is really just an object. Nowadays it would be called an animation app, but back then everyone, everything was just an object. And then we have the, the painting app down, down here where you can actually modify things. And um, if you check out uh, Alan's talk, um, he will actually make a connection from this object to this object um, to, to change to, to uh, paint over one frame inside of the, of the uh, animation um, to change it while it's running. And this is like connecting things just by being light bound, by allowing the user to construct their own um, applications. Um, and um, I don't think I will try this because I didn't practice. Um, so, but look at the, look at the video. Um, Alan does, does a really good job of that. So this was the second uh, virtual machine. Um, and the third one is going to be um, Squeak.js, um, which we also saw today already. Um, Dan was using um, an old Squeak image, right? Um, so, but uh, this can actually uh, run uh, quite a few images. Like this is an eToys image. Uh, you saw some of the things you can, you can do there. Um, I can load, um, oh, Quiz. Um, so it, yeah, this is an older version of Quiz that, that I just had here. Um, it's been in my web browser forever, I guess. When, when is this? Okay, 2019, it's a while. Um, so I didn't try if the latest version still works in, in Squeak.js, but it is a real virtual machine where you can just load um, the images and as long as the primitives are there, um, it will work. And okay, let's see, open, let's open a, oh, I think you will believe me. Okay, another transcript, okay, why not? Um, so, and, um, one, uh, one of the cool things in here is um, if I stop, uh, so if I say I do not want to run the image right after loading it, I can turn off this little thing. And then when I load an image, uh, let's say an old one here, the, the mini image, it will actually st uh, stop the debugger right after loading the snapshot. And this is the, the magic of coming back from the snapshot primitive. So the way snapshots work in, in Smalltalk is that, okay, you say save and quit, right? Or just save. What happens is that the quit primitive here, this line gets executed, a snapshot is taken, there's a little bit of housekeeping uh, behind the scenes, but when you load the image, that's exactly where it continues. Like it's never stopped, this, uh, Smalltalk doesn't have a main where the world, like most other programming languages, rebuild the whole world every time you start the application. There's a main and, and it calls some other pr functions uh, that create objects and all of that. And that, that all takes a shit lot of time. Uh, excuse my French. Um, so the small talk, as you know, puts uh, the, the uh, image back into memory, reversing the, sw the SWOT operation, as we learned today from, from the Alto. Um, and that just continues running, and that's such a wonderful system. Um, and uh, here you can actually watch this in action when I, when I step over the things uh, here. So it's, uh, it's at the byte, byte code level, but at this point we, we don't really have an, um, a small talk environment yet to actually look at this. And I use this stuff a lot to actually debug this thing into existence um, as we went along, and I, I had a little uh, it's not here anymore. Uh, I had a little bytecode counter where um, it would run for like 10 bytecodes and then it would run for 200 bytecodes and then it would run for 1,000 bytecodes um, to actually do things. Okay, so we are sending not here to true and true, so that true should become a false. Yep, and then we are sending an and, which true and false and is Oh, this is an actual, that, that was an actual method sent. So true implements end um, by actually pushing 
the the receiver um, no the argument onto the the stack. Yeah. So that will push false and return false. So that's why true and false is false. That's the boolean uh, magic we uh, Dan mentioned today in action. And if I say continue, then this will actually run at full speed. And this is a, a very old mini image, which is like, I think, about 600 kilobytes. Uh, Dan made that at one point, uh, which has the full uh, environment in here. Like, I, I can open a browser. Um, I can even turn on colors if I, if I want uh, again, because it's, it's uh, Smalltalk 96, after all, uh, which we, they called Squeak for some weird reason. Um, if we should have been called Smalltalk uh, 96, I think people would, would have thought that that's more professional. Then again, we like to have fun. Um, anyway, so that's that. Is that. And um, I think I'm just going to stop here. Uh, so we, we saw three um, virtual machines. One was the Croquet virtual machine, the Smalltalk 78 virtual machine, the Squeak virtual machine, and um, I hope there are a few questions. Okay, hello. Um, so my question is, what made you start um, this journey of like virtual machines? Like, where did you learn about uh, like coding a virtual machine, and what did um, it make you uh, begin this path of work? Um, so I joined the Squeak community right at the beginning in 1997, um, and it came with virtual machine sources. They, they were just included in the image, um, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. L let's just peek at that. So I actually learned, uh, or I, let's say I got interested in it just because it was there. Um, so I browsed the machine, and okay, that 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 sounds interesting, and then. I was using Linux at the time, um, and Ian Piomata originally wrote the, the Linux virtual machine. Um, and my background that I did my PhD in was actually 3D graphics. And so when Andreas Raab uh, built Balloon 3D, um, there was only a Windows version. Um, I think John did the, the Mac version, I guess, right? For, for the 3D support. It's been a long time, but yeah, right? Um, and I did the, um, the Linux version. So that was my first like dabbling into, um, into virtual machine work and learning about how plugins work and how it all fits together. And uh, at some point I started admiring the, just that idea of kind of pro giving the users a perfect world. Like that's what a virtual machine does. It, it creates the illusion of a perfect world. And if that e illusion is, is really good, then it's a relatively small surface of things that the virtual machine provides because everything else is, is created inside of the image. That, that was uh, what, what Dan did with, uh, with Bitlit. Before Bitlit, there were like 100 graphics primitives. Draw a line, draw a character, draw a circle, draw this, draw that. Um, but after converting it to bitlet, you only had one primitive. Put these pixels over here and everything else is built up from that. And the, the same thing is like with file handling and all the things that, that the virtual machine is supposed to do, um, which is the reason why I really like virtual machines because I could just take those interfaces and implement JavaScript versions of it. Whereas uh, the, the other way is not putting it in a virtual machine, but using something like FFI, uh, the foreign function interface that lets you call um, operating system functions directly, which is cool because you don't have to write VM code. On the other hand, it will only run on that operating system. Like if, if Squeak had been written that way where it had code to open a file in on the Mac and on Windows and on Linux, then I would have to Im implement one of those operating system system calls in my JavaScript VM, which would be weird, crazy, uh, no fun. Um, whereas this one was actually fun to do. So 
Thank you for that question. Um, I, I never really thought about how I got into it, but that's, that's kind of how I got into it. <laughs> uh, when you were showing the Croquet uh, VM, you were mentioning actually you have like distributed VMs all around. And how do they reach consensus when you have all those? How is it what? How do you reach consensus with the, that distributed yeah. uh, VM so thing? It's not a distributed VM, it's a replicated VM. Okay. So every virtual machine is completely identical. And they just advance state by the events that are coming in. So what we call the, our server is called a reflector. Uh, so it sends out a time stream, which advances simulation time. Or when someone interacts, then they insert an event into that. And every client receives the exact same stream of events, and that's how they stay in sync. Mm, a couple of questions about uh, the same, about yeah. that. Uh, I, I guess the, the answer is it doesn't matter, but does the difference of speed between different JavaScript VMs on different devices matter? They do, actually, okay. yes, yes. So um, JavaScript is almost good because there is an actual standard, and nowadays all major virtual machines follow that standard pretty well. Um, one of the standards it relies on is the IEEE uh, floating-point standard. And floating-point standards uh, allow the machine to differ in their results, not for the basic operations like plus minus, division, multiplication, those are defined down to the last bit. But all other, like the transcendental functions, sine, cosine, uh, all those, uh, they are allowed to differ. And so we had cases where this actually differs between an, an Android phone and a Mac, for example even though both are ARM architectures, but also between like Intel and, and ARM. So there are differences in, I think it's just rounding modes mostly. Um, it only differs by one bit, like the least significant bit, but for us, even the least significant bit matters, right? And so what we ended up doing, we are actually patching the browser's math library and replacing it with our own bit identical functions. And so it will run slower, but it will run identically. Uh, the other part is that in your, in your code, you must not um, use anything that might be implementation specific or that might actually access state outside of the virtual machine. So what I'm calling there the virtual machine is really just a little bit of sandboxing where we tell people, uh, our developers, to don't do things that will break things. Um, and we do that so that the, the code inside of that virtual machine actually runs at full speed. So we're not interpreting uh, the JavaScript, it's running the actual JavaScript as the, the host environment uh, does it. You also said that, that every uh, machine will get the same stream of events. Yes. Uh, what about uh, differences in timing, some, some different delays in, in different machines in getting some event. Every, every event has a timestamp. So it's all running on virtual t uh, time, and so that's why the time will still be deterministic.